In this video, we're going to discuss relatively briefly uh, some of the most important ratios which your curriculum lists as belonging under the topic of ratios used in credit or corporate credit analysis. And as we discussed in the previous video on um, assessing uh, corporate cre credit worthiness, um, those ratios belong to a couple of groups. We're going to specifically drill down and discuss three of those. Uh, looking at profitability ratios or profitability measures to be more exact uh, we'll look at those measures which um, illustrate a company's uh, coverage when it comes to its ability to service debt payments or interest payments and leverage which is all about the relative reliance on debt funding um, all of these ratios uh, of you know extremely highly used by credit analysts, especially the, the last two. Uh, profitability is, uh, as, you will, as you will appreciate, a very widely used measure, not necessarily just in the debt world. Now, let me state that all of these are no, all of these measures are not going to be non IFRS measures or non GAAP measures as they are sometimes referred to especially in America so there is no def single definition of these um, ratios that we're going to discuss here in the IFRS or other rules of accounting uh, analysts may um, use or utilize their own variants of these ratios which they find more um, more useful there will be adjustments made to these ratios so don't get uh, the impression that there is a single version although for the purposes of the exam it's good to know the official version as mentioned in your books okay let's move on to the most important metrics most important ratios within each of the categories starting with profitability well as you will uh, probably expect and appreciate the uh, a lot of the profitability measurement when it comes to uh, credit risk analysis is going to be centered around the notion of operating profit. It is, after all, operating profit from which we derive operating cash flows, and it's those operating cash flows that provide us or provide a company a way to service its uh, its debt. So, EBIT margin is the ratio that's mentioned in your curriculum. This is naturally the relationship between earnings before interest and taxes so before we move on to the um, financing segment or financial segment of the income statement and the tax consequences divided by the revenue generated by the business and of course up here instead of EBIT you will often find EBITDA which is uh, obviously earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization which gets us somewhat closer to a cash flow measure uh, now the next group coverage ratios uh, slightly more tricky because uh, you know you'll be uh, these are these are somewhat less known um, once again lots of different variants of how we measure coverage exist uh, however one ratio which your curriculum uh, focuses on here is the relationship of EBIT so once again earnings before interest and taxes or simply operating income operating profit and the interest expense interest expense so to what extent is interest expense covered by our earnings before interest and taxes obviously EBIT is calculated before the deduction of interest expense so this is um, I guess logically um, logically uh, sensible to measure things this way the ratio measures the degree to which operating income that's EBIT literally covers our interest payments or interest expenses Payments are not always equal to expenses, but you know that's a that's another thing. The accruals concept in financial reporting, right? A, a couple of notes. Just like over here, we said that EBIT may be changed to EBITDA. Well, once again, the same is true. Or EBITDA, if you wish to 
um, focus more on a cash flow based measure or cash flow closer to cash flow measure uh, you would take uh, out the depreciation and amortization expense making the numerator of the fraction higher so this will um, give you a if you if you switch to the EBITDA measure it will give you a more favorable um, a more favorable coverage ratio however please appreciate that there is another adjustment you can make you can switch to EBITDA and this is, of course, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, but also R, which, get, which is going to stand for rental expenses. Okay, rental expenses. Now, what's the, what's the idea behind this? Well, you see, rental expenses are typically associated with operating leases or at least what on the US GAAP is still called operating uh, leases. In IFRS we just have leases. Um, when, whenever you rent, for example, property um, these days under IFRS is treated as a, a, as, as a lease um, and, and accounted for on the balance sheet. However, if you've got rental expenses sitting over here, you may take them out and then in the bottom of the fraction in the denominator, you may also then adjust and add not just interest expenses but operating lease payments to see how much your operating profit your operating income before rental expenses covers not only interest expenses but also operating lease payments which are generally rental payments it's it's a bit tricky these days with um with um the changes that have happened in recent years to international financial reporting standards, but it's an adjustment that does make sense. You don't have to necessarily perform this. You won't have to perform and calculate these things. You just have to know about them and be able to say that a ratio like this belongs under the heading coverage. So the way this gets tested, at least in the end of chapter questions, is just match the ratio with the appropriate group of ratios. Either profitability, coverage, or the third and final one, leverage. So look, the way to be able to match them is coverage measures the degree to which operating income or some variant of it covers debt-related payments, be they pure interest expense or interest expense plus principal payments, right? If you've got a ratio that's structured in this way, it will belong under the heading coverage. Leverage measures, as we said in a previous video, the relative um, extent to which a company relies on debt funding. And the most common one you're going to get here is debt to a bit da. So generally, an expression for how much debt you've got in relation to how much income you uh, periodically produced. Uh, this actually, uh, this ratio is often used or often often cited, often referenced in uh, loan covenants. Okay, um, and uh, if you breach the level of debt to a bit, if this becomes too high, you know, if too high it typically triggers uh, certain um, certain actions uh, from the loan provider, from the bank, uh, but also triggers um, ratings changes potentially, because ratings agencies uh, also look at the relationship of debt to EBITDA. Please appreciate that we may also have debt in relation to assets or uh, as, as a purely balance sheet focused leverage uh, measure. But also, let me write this down, I did say it in the previous video, but this debt may also be in the denominator. It may not necessarily, it doesn't have to uh, feature in the numerator. It may also feature in the denominator of the relevant fraction. And a good example of this is a ratio I discussed in the previous video, RCF in relation to net debt. 
So here we've, we've got a turnaround, but because debt, either net or just debt features in this ratio, it's still going to be long to uh, leverage, right? It's not a coverage ratio. Coverage ratios don't necessarily have debt in them. They've got interest expense or interest expense plus principal payments that are made over a course of one year typically. Here, if, if you've got debt as such featuring in the in the ratio, it's going to be one of those leverage uh, ratios. And uh, as I said in the previous video, RCF stands for retained cash flow in relation to net debt. And be careful, right, what you wish for. If net debt becomes excessively high, this ratio becomes quite low or the outcome of it. So lower ratio signals higher leverage, which is a signal or a sign of deteriorating credit worthiness. On the other hand, if you've got the debt in the numerator, uh, you know, a higher ratio leads to higher leverage when it comes to this one. So you have to be mindful of where the debt element sits uh, to assess what you really want from a corporate issuer.